today was supposed to be a day of celebration because today was Gen Con Hotel Lottery Day. Unfortunately, the uh, system at Gen Con is pretty much completely out of whack and completely unbalanced. And once again, for the second time in three years, um, I am unable basically to attend uh, because they sell a bunch of badges and they don't have hotel rooms for people. Uh, this year being especially uh, awesome because they literally sold out out of every uh, hotel in the entire hotel uh, housing block, which means unless you want to pay, you know, I don't know, $1,000 a night for some, uh, you know, scalping, gouging price uh, from some private uh, dealer, some hotel or Airbnb, you're not going. Yeah, Gen Con uh, has been just uh, just a real disaster, honestly. And, and I'll be honest with you, uh, here's my main problem with the process of Gen Con. I don't, obviously, you know, supply and demand. And if there are more people who want to go to Gen Con than can attend Gen Con, uh, that's, you know, that's fine. Uh, obviously, in a pure capitalistic way, you the price would just be the price. And the hotels would keep raising their rates and whoever could afford them could afford them and whoever couldn't couldn't. Uh, you know, that has certain classist, structuralist, uh, capitalistic problems with it. So I am fine, uh, even uh, that, that I don't, even though I occasionally get the shafted on this, I am okay with them doing a lottery to decide who basically gets to, uh, to, gets to go. Here's my problem, though. Here's my biggest problem. My biggest problem is that the issue isn't that there aren't enough hotel rooms in Indianapolis to support Gen Con. The problem is that Gen Con sells too many fucking badges. They are selling people badges that they know cannot attend. And here's the worst part. The worst part is you have to buy your badge and it's non-refundable for $150, $160. You have to buy that back in, say, January just so that you can get a chance at maybe actually getting to go. And that's not refundable. That's the part that is fucked up to me. Because Gen Con, LLC, knows perfectly well that there aren't enough hotel rooms to support 70 or 80 or 90 or whatever thousand badges that they are selling these days. But they sell, they'll sell them to you. They won't stop selling to them. Right now, the Gen Con housing block is completely sold out. In fact, it was sold out as of 3 p.m. this afternoon. So I'm not even, I mean, by the way, that doesn't mean downtown. That means all the way out to the airport on the sort of outer ring that goes around Indy, the highway. But you can go on GenCon.com right now and buy a badge, a four-day badge for 100 and whatever, $65, $175. And they'll sell it to you, even though there's really no way for you to attend unless you live in the area, I guess. So my problem with that, and then, by the way, because, uh, uh, you know, and again, I, I've been going to Gen Con for many, many years. I've been, I've been, I went to Gen Con its first year that it was in, Indi in Indianapolis. The other problem is that there's sort of three stages, okay? Stage one, you buy a badge, non-refundable. You pay your money, you get your badge. Then, about a month later, you get a shot at maybe getting a hotel. Now, if you're lucky and you get a hotel downtown, it's an incredibly amazing experience, right? The convention center's right there. I mean, think about any other convention that you've attended, right? Typically, you have the ability to walk over. Uh, it could be right next door. It could like, maybe be a city block or two away. But for some people, it involves driving in every day, Ubering in every day, which in a, in a sense becomes just almost, just almost as expensive and way more inconvenient. But wait, they're not done yet. Because next comes event registration. Obviously, Gen Con has the big exhibitor hall. Some people call it the dealer hall, where you have thousands of different booths representing all sorts of different companies. And all these people, uh, it's really fun. It's great, great to go to. However, well, there is a problem with it. We'll get back to that. A lot of what people to go to Gen Con for is to play in games. And you can sign up for these events. And yes, it costs a couple bucks to play in some of these events. Some of the events are a little bit more pricey. But by and large, it's, you know, I don't know, four to five to six dollars. By the way, that's after you've paid for your flight and your hotel and your badge and all that other stuff. But wait, you think you can just get into any event you want? No, 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 no. Okay, you have to sign up 
And if and if you don't sign up on the day, I mean the exact second that the events go live, even if you do, but if you don't, you're not getting into any of your events. And you might submit and say, oh, I really want to go to Gen Con because I really want to play in you know, this game and this game and this game, and you see it on the event listing and you're like, oh, this is going to be cool. I get to play, I'm going to play in this, uh, you know, I'm going to play in this uh, Karn game and then I'm going to play in this Dragon Bane game and I'm going to play in some Pathfinder Society and I'm going to play, oh, there's another thing. Okay, so you're like very excited about this. So you buy your badge, non-refundable, and then you win the lotto and you get a hotel. Sure, it's 45 minutes away, but you got it. So then the day comes, you submit your event list and you don't get into any of those events. So at this point, you now have a non-refundable badge, a non-refundable or perhaps a very steep cancellation fee hotel reservation, and you got into none or very few of the events that you actually wanted to go to Gen Con for. And, uh, I, you know, and, and this is just the problem with it's just too big. It's just too big. And, and, and this gets back to what I was talking about before about the dealer hall, okay? When I first started going to Gen Con in 2003, the first year, uh, and, and throughout the 2000s, when the attendance was about, you know, 25,000, 30,000, guess how many Paizo booths were in the exhibitor hall? That's right. One. One. There's one hall. There's one Paizo booth. Guess how many Asmodee games booths there are? One. How many uh, Fantasy Flight games booths are there? There's one. When there was 30,000 people, 25,000 people. Guess how many Paizo booths there are now that there are 75,000 or 80,000? One. How many Fantasy Flight booths are there now that there are 80,000 people? One. Okay. The attendance has more than doubled. By some estimates, tripled. The, the convention center is the same size. And the number of vendors, you know, there's still only one Paizo vendor. There's still only one, you know, uh, if you go there to see Wayne Reynolds or some other famous artist like we did, it was, you know, 25,000 people. Well, now it's the same number. It's the same artist, but now there's 90,000 people. So good luck. So this would be like if, you had to buy your ticket to, let's say, Disney World before you even knew if you would be able to stay in Disney World, right? So it's like, you're like, oh, I got a badge. I can go to Disney World. I don't have a hotel. I can't stay. I'm not talking about like on the property, by the way. I'm talking about like in Orlando. So you're like, okay, so I could, I guess I could get a hotel in Miami, and drive two or whatever it is, two, three hours into Orlando every day to go to Disney. Okay, fine. But then once you get to Disney, after you've done all this hotel shenanigans, which you may not even have gotten a hotel, you get there and you find out that there is a random chance that you might get to ride any of the rides. But they tell you, but it's fine. The gift stores are open. The, gi the gift shops are open. We got a tip coming in from GM Scott. GM Scott tipped $5, but Derek, you're missing the point. Sure, you might have spent a lot of money and got none of your events, but the important things is, you can tell people you went. Yes, that is that is that is very true. Now, listen, I'm not, I mean, I am shitting on Gen Con a little bit, but let me be very clear about this. If I had gotten a hotel room, I would still probably be ranting about this um, because I do think that the system is fundamentally flawed because they're selling people badges that may or may not be useful because you may not have a hotel room and you may not be able to go and you might not get into any of the events that you wanted to get to. And I think it's bullshit that the badge is non-refundable. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a really unfortunate situation. And so it's, it's cool that they get to, you know, that everybody gets to go to Gen Con, but not really, not really. I mean, I, I, it, it is it is not the experience that it used to be. And you might say, okay, well, but you know, things change. Right, you're right, things have changed. The price has doubled to go to Gen Con. The badge cost has doubled. But you're getting a you're getting a lesser experience. You're getting you're not gonna be able to do as many you're not gonna be able to do as many events. You are gonna have a worse hotel. You are gonna have a harder time getting into food or restaurants. Um 
it is uh it, it is quite it is quite the the subdued experience from what it used to be uh and they're charging you more money for it and in some cases like for example for me uh, there is a very good chance that I won't be going but they got my hundred and seventy five dollars for me for my badge so good job now this will be the second time in two years because I did go last year uh, I got a hotel that was only a couple of blocks away from the hotel from the convention center but the year prior to that 2022 I've got my badge in the other room but I didn't go you know why couldn't get a hotel room so that's they, they have gotten three badges from me of of worth of money but only had to deliver to it once and I just find that to be very problematic now yes the solution to this is they should cap Gen Con they should say 50,000 badges we're only going to sell 50,000 badges now, how, how do you get a bad? Oh, that can be a lottery. I get it. it you know, I, I'm not saying it should be the wild, wild west of capitalism. We can have a lottery for 50,000 badges, but don't sell people badges if you can't guarantee them a host, a place to stay or a uh, events or somehow get them, you know, promise them events. Because Gen Con makes no, you know, there's no, you buy your badge before the event catalog is published. You have no idea what events are going to be running at Gen Con when you sign up. So it's it's a crapshoot. And by the way, in the on the on the off chance that they have a ton of events that you are really really interested in, they may all very well be sold out. When you sign up at minute 0, hour 0, day 1 of the event sign up, you you might still not get into any of your games. Uh I I don't know what kind of experience, you know, that really is. Um and, and Armored Anathema says, cons have never really appealed to me conceptually. It basically is the equivalent of running a game with 12 plus players, but worse. I mean, there's a very similar situation to that, right? Where like I, I, you see these GMs and I, I see them up at like my FLGS where they're running Adventure League or Pathfinder Society. And they don't want to say no to people. So they say, oh, yeah, sure, you can join. Oh, yeah, sure, you could join. And suddenly they've got a game, a D20 based game, and they have 11 people at their table. And I don't, I don't know if you're doing anybody any favors. Because everybody seems to be having a terrible time because the game it doesn't function at that scale. It would be better, fairer, and more polite to say after the sixth person, no, sorry, that wouldn't be fair to the players that are already here. Oh, but, but 12 people want to play. How do you decide who gets in? I know. Choices, lotteries, any of that stuff is prone to corruption or nepotism. I understand that there are fundamental flaws with all of those things. But just saying everybody can go is is not a solution because they are lying to you. You cannot go. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, anyways, I didn't want to completely rant off on this. But long story short, I you know again, uh, I am a twenty year veteran of Gen Con. I don't necessarily know that that I don't want to even not saying I should get any sort of special treatment. Not at all. Not even close. I'm simply saying I, I'd like it if they didn't steal my money for the second time in three years. That's all. 